Hello all, Scott Grove here today to explain a lot of things to you guys, hopefully in a little amount of time. Um, this is to get everybody um, who is not a tech head or a gear head um, a little information if you want it. Okay, and for the rest of you who do want this information, then here it is. This is the difference between all of the switches and knobs and all that. So being um, coil splitting, okay, for coil splitting is one thing. Coil tapping, so to have a coil split and a coil tap are two totally different things. One is not even possible on um, humbuckers, one is. Um, Gibson being totally retarded as they are, they don't know the difference and they constantly get it wrong in their advertisements, even in their new Les Paul Traditional Pro 2's, they have the wrong version. So coil taps and coil splits are two different things. They're saying that the new ones have coil um, taps and they don't. They have coil split. But they don't know what they're doing, so they just think they can interchange the words. I'll show you what each are. Um, things from uh, parallel to series switches, phase switches, no phase switches, or not phase shifters that are broken. Everybody thinks a phase switch is just that. They think it's supposed to be a phase shifter for some reason. They've thought that for years, but no, that's not what it is. It's in and out of phase. I'll tell you what that is. Um, there are um, other things. There are, um, we'll just go through it all. All the little possibilities that you can think of. Even, um, God, there's just so many. The S1 switches, the all the different possible ways that all these different switchings and blah, blah, blah are. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do first is just get you right down to guitars and get you right down to brass tacks. Okay, this is a old, what year is this? 81, I believe. Yeah, 81. Amazing. Ibanez Blazer. Okay, this is back when Ibanez was good. Okay. Around 85 is when they went to hell and they haven't been good since. I know, I'll get cards and mails, letters, but I don't care. But anyway, it is true. Um, yes, these were made in Japan. That's when they were good. So, the current Japanese stuff is fine and dandy, but these smoke them. Okay, anyway, so we have three single coil pickups, like a traditional Strat. This one just happens to have a um, coil tap right here and an in and out of phase switch. Okay, to understand the coil tap, okay, this is not a um, coil split. This is a coil tap. Okay, so when... Um, People rarely use coil taps at all, okay, these days. These were big on these and the Ovation Breadwinners back when and everything funky. And um, and same with the uh, in and out of phase is hardly ever used. So e both of these are hardly ever used. Um, so if you see something that is made today, be this being 2012 at this point, uh, that says it has a coil tap on it, and it has humbuckers, then they are lying to you. Coil taps are done on single coil pickups only. So Gibson does have out a few new Les Pauls that have the soap bar pickups in them, which, let me just grab a guitar with soap bar pickups. That's these old things, for those who don't know. Yes, those are single coil pickups, and yes, those can have a coil tap. Okay, there's no humbuckers there, so they can't be split into a single coil. That's what most people think a coil tap does, but no, not at all. You cannot put a coil tap on a humbucking pickup. Okay, you can only put a coil split, so it splits it in two, shuts one of them off, basically, and you have basically a single coil sound. That's a coil split. Way two different things. Okay, so let's go to what a coil tap actually is. Okay, when you have a pickup, it is just basically magnets, and then you got your pole pieces, then it is just wound with copper wire thousands and times around. Okay, when you get to a certain point, um, it gets to where it sounds great. Single coil pickups are generally almost half the output of a humbucking pickup, but 
it's just what it is. Um, but they can be made to be the same volume, but then the tone gets different, but then you can change different things in your guitar to make it sound better once it's there. So I'll get through some of that. So okay, so they're winding a single coil pick up. They're winding it, winding it, winding it. Say it's supposed to get 10,000 turns. That's, that's how many winding it's supposed to have. I'm just making up a number, okay? Um, that's what it's supposed to have to sound like a normal Strat or sound like a normal three pickup, you know, single pickup guitar. Okay, well when it gets time to get to that point, you get to your 10,000 reps, then they stop and they put a wire on there. So it's not just a hot and a ground wire coming off of here. They put a third wire on. So they get to that 10,000 wrap. They put a wire there that goes to the switch. Okay? And then they keep winding. Now as they keep winding beyond that point, um, this is what's called over, getting overwound and getting hotter. So they will, the more windings you put on a single coil pickup, or any pickup, it will get louder. So now we're winding, we're winding, we're winding, and we're going up to about 15,000 windings. And then finally they stop. And um, that's where that ends up. So what it also does after that 10,000 windings, as my made up number of normal, 10,000 being normal for that pickup, and where they tapped it at and put it on that switch, is um, as it gets louder, as they're winding it, it also gets what is called warmer, or means it is sterile, it's muffled sounding, it sounds like a humbucker almost. It loses its high end, it becomes dull. Okay, people, um, that's basically what warm tone means, is it's dull. That is, that has been used a million times. And the comparison, this is not me making up a comparison because I don't like humbuckers. This is what is generally used to describe a humbucker is the word dull. Okay, so you have 10,000 windings and you are playing on your, say your bridge pickup. Okay, so right now it is normal. Or it's a Okay, right now here it is normal. So that's just the bridge pickup at the 10,000 windings. Okay, or you know the number I gave you. Okay, so now it's going to with the flick of the switch go to the 15,000 windings with more volume and less high end and more bass and more mid-range but more muffled, more dull. So, crispy, clean, single coil sound. Then you flick the switch. This is a coil tap. That's the difference. So from here, back to this. That is where it is actually tapped. So it's tapped at the 10,000th winding. So it's back to normal. Okay, then you release it to full power at the 15,000 windings and you get more power, but you lose your high end and you lose your tone. It's just like rolling your tone knob off, kind of. Okay, so again, listen. Okay, so you don't have that sparkle high end. That is a coil tap. So hopefully that helps you out. So that is nice to get a pseudo, meaning sort of, humbucking tone out of a single coil guitar. Okay, there's no humbucker here, of course, but a coil tap is actually just, they overwind the pickup and at some point along the line they actually tap it, meaning they put the third wire in where it still would normally sound like the regular single coil pickup. Okay, so that is a coil tap. So you see all these Les Pauls with humbuckers on them and ads from Gibson says they have coil taps on it. Bullshit, they are wrong. They just don't know the proper terminology. It's just the way it is. Okay, um, you're like, well, they should know their Gibson. It's like, no, they don't. <laughs> That's just the sad thing about it is they don't. Okay, so, so 
Now there you go again, regular single coil sound. And that's the tapped version, meaning that's it regular. Now the overwound. Now back to normal single coil sounding. And that would work in well with like the two position, like a regular strat here and here, like we all like them. So that is tapped back at the 10,000 windings. Now if we kick this in to full winding mode. So now you have one single coil. So it's just a bridge pickup that is tapped. Okay, so now we just added a little bit of beef to that sound. Now back to But you can really tell it when it's just by itself. Here it is at normal again, or tapped. And then split it. Or not split it, I'm sorry, tap it back to the 15,000 windings. the other way. Okay, so there's coil tap. I'll shut up about that. Okay, the other thing, and I will leave it in typical single coil mode, so it's back to the 10,000 windings, and I'm in the two position. So here and here, these two pickups. Now we're going to do what is called the phase switch, in and out of phase, not a phase shifter. So here's normal. Okay, what this essentially does is a circuit that makes it basically sound like if you were to turn a magnet on the bottom of your pickup the other way, upside down. Okay, they are on there polarized for a certain reason to, you know, give, you know, this, they're all on there the same way. They're not, um, one is not upside down, but some people do actually take their pickups. Um, this is a well known trick. Uh, for us guys that are old like me from back in the 70s to actually take the pickup and take the magnet off of the neck pickup and turn it upside down to get this sound. A lot of people used to do it uh, just to get that funky funky sound. Everything was funky in the 70s. So here it is normal. So that is in phase. Everything is normal. <laughs> here it is out of phase. So this is like turning a magnet upside down on these pick on one of the two pickups. Okay, very funky. Okay. Now this is hooked up to the middle pickup so that you get you can do it with these two pickups on, with the middle pickup on, or with these two on. So now I am back into these two pickups in phase. Here it's out of phase. So everybody that thought this was a phase shifter going no, it's just an in and out of phase switch. It switches the polarity of the magnet is what it's essentially doing. And people, yes, would intentionally flip their magnet upside down to get that sound. Okay? It's just what we did back in the day. So that's what an out-of-phase guitar sounds like. Okay? A lot of people confuse things with, especially Strat-type guitars. They think that, okay, you're down here with your pickup selector in the first position, which is just your bridge pickup. And people get this wrong and that's okay I'm here to help you go to the second position and you have these two on and they think that's called out of phase no that's called turning on two pickups nothing more don't read anything else into it then you go to the middle it's just the middle pickup if you go to the next position it's these two pickups people sometimes call that out of phase no it is not it's simply turning on two pickups they are in phase with each other you're like, well, it has that out of phase sound. It's like, no, it doesn't. It has the sound of two single coil pickups on. Okay? And then finally the last one. So, again, for those of you who are out there saying, K-1000 
Okay, here is on the two position. So what you guys, some of you only, I'm going to accuse only some of you, you think it sounds out of phase. Here it is, like a normal strat. Here is what out of phase sounds like, so you quit saying it. So if your guitar sounds that shitty, um, you know, you either have something wrong with it, or you actually have it out of phase. But that is what out of phase actually is. That is out of phase. Not just this. That's just two pickups on. Just like if you have a Les Paul and one humbucker was here and one was here. That kind of sounds like this. I will show you that too. Um, I'll put, you know, a guitar with three humbuckers and put two humbuckers turned on and it gives you kind of a stratty sound even though they're humbuckers. So these are not out of phase because there's two of them on, so get that out of your head. Okay, so there's that stuff. Okay, let's get the great Ibanez out of the way. This is as good as any strat ever made in any country. Um, no matter how much you pay for it, 10,000 bucks or 300 bucks, doesn't matter. Okay, let's go to the Les Paul traditional Pro from 2009. They have the traditional Pro 2 now, which is different than this, and I will explain the difference and tell you the differences. The only thing this is, this has what's called a burst bucker. Pick up in the bridge and the classic, you know, 57. Pick up in the neck. All they did with this was put coil splits on them. And again, they call them coil taps half the time, and they even put little plastic pieces on here on the guitar to kind of show you point to each knob what each thing does when you buy it that you take it off you know you just peel it off and throw it away but it says coil tap pull this knob it's like no it's not a coil tap it's a coil split and Gibson is constantly screwing this up okay so humbucker humbucker typical stuff and via a push pull knob for each pickup on the volumes it does the coil splitting so it actually turns you know one coil of the humbuckers off okay back at this point until this year of 2012 of the new um, traditional Pro 2 that they have just now released um, they finally corrected what is wrong with this that you never get a true single coil sound because one both stay active even though you shut off one via doing this and this ha this is with all of the traditional pros so the explorers the flying v's every traditional pro that has been made from 2009 10 11 and 12 until you get to the pr traditional traditional pro 2 um, are all this way they are imperfect unless you like that sound um, which means your single coil sounds will not sound like a single coil they will sound a little heavier so this will not sound like a telly it will sound kind of, um, and it will never sound like a Les Paul again because they screwed up the wiring. It's just Gibson. It's what they do. And I have a Fender here that got it right decades ago. Okay, so here you go. Uh, let's go to the bridge pickup. In humbucking mode. So that's just everything on 10, okay? Everything on 10 on the bridge. Now I pull up on the coil split back to humbucker coil split okay then let's do that again but let's do it to the neck pickup so here it is humbucker split See, it sounds very single coily, but it is not, it does not sound like a telly single coil. The new ones do. They finally, tru truly went to single coils. So you're, right now I'm playing on this white pickup bobbin, this coil only. The black is not shut off. It, it's barely leaking through, but enough that it sounds like a really fat single coil, which might be your t taste. You may not want it as thin and jangly as a telly. So check them out. Um, if you want something that has a heavier, 
just a slightly fuller sound than a telly, this is a perfect guitar for that. You don't want it to be quite that jangly. You know, you could always roll off the tone knobs on any version, but this is a great guitar and that's why I got it. It's actually, it's the only reason I got it because of the coil splits. Okay, it's the only reason I would have a Les Paul. So that's the neck pickup split back to, so here it is, single coil, kind of. Here it is, back to humbucker. Okay, so now let's do both pickups and humbucker. Both pickups split. So that's two single coils, trying to make it sound like a telly. Now let's just turn the bridge into a humbucker, but leave the neck in single coil. Okay? So here's both in single coil again. Now, humbucker in the bridge. Now let's do it the opposite way. Both single coil. Now the neck in humbucking. Now both humbucking. Okay, so there's all the stuff. So this is coil splitting. Okay, this is what Gibson really means when they say coil tap. Okay, so these are not quite full coil splits. The other pickups do, or the other, I should say other pickups because these are two separate pickups hooked together, but the new versions the, on the uh, traditional Pro 2s, they actually go into actual single coil modes. And then they do another thing where it bypasses the tone controls. It sounds like shit. Um, and it goes straight from the pickups to the jack. Sounds like garbage, but they've done that now. Added that to it and some other crap. But um, I'm totally happy with this version. Okay, so that is a not a true coil split, but that's what Gibson calls, or what coil splitting is, um, when you take a humbucker and try to make it into a single coil pickup. That's a coil split. It is never a coil tap. That's the other nasty sounding thing you heard. So, learn the difference. Use the terminology correctly because they are two very different things. Again, you do not put a coil tap on a humbucker. <laughs> you don't do it. It don't exist. Okay, here's one of the greatest guitars ever made and people don't get it. And that's fine with me. Leave more guitars for me. Uh, these are extremely rare. I've got a few of them. These are the old Fender Performer guitars. Okay. Check out the headstock. Okay. Fender. Okay, you don't see many of these. Okay. There you go. Check it out. Um, best thing ever invented, the micro tilt. So you can get full adjustment on your neck. I don't know why anybody would want anything other than a bolt on, so you could always work on it. That, so you can always change the angle and put, instead of putting picks under it and all that. Anyway, this has two humbuckers right here. Nothing way up here. It's got 24 frets, but it's got these two pickups down here. It's like a strat without the neck pickup. But these are humbuckers, except for right here. That is a coil split. So it turns these into real single coils, unlike the Gibson that I just showed you. So this one actually works. <laughs> Okay, because Fender is, you know, the single coil king. So, here we go. Okay. Da -da -da. Okay, there it is in humbucking with both pickups on. Okay? Both pickups, humbuckers. Amplifier back. Okay, so there you go, that dull sound, or as Gibson people call it, warm. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to split them both, split them, coil splitting, into single coils. 
get my knob correct. Let me put a little bit. It's been like two years since I've even played this. I want you to get the full benefit of the guitar. So we will properly clean the toggle switch, which is giving me a little bit of fit right now. And we are good as new. Okay, so now a real demonstration. Okay, back to humbuckers. Splitting to single coils. Do you hear a difference in volume? No. Fender got it right. They put more electronics in there to make up for it. See? So, hum, uh, single coil. Humbucker. Single coil. Hear the difference? Okay, so big time. Dull humbuckers. Single coil brings it to life. Okay, so just for people who don't like single coils for some reason, I don't get it, but that's your preference. Um, bridge, um, humbucker. Bridge, single coil. Okay, let's do the both humbuckers, both singles. Okay, it's just cool. single so there you go okay this has what's called a TBX all right tone control when it's at five it has an indentation you'll see these on a lot of Fender guitars people don't know what they are when it is at five it is like a normal tone control at ten okay so from zero to five it's like going from zero to ten on a normal Fender guitar okay and what TBX stands for is treble bass expander. So what it does, when you turn up the TBX tone control, this is a passive circuit. There's no batteries involved, so it's not active. It turns up the treble and the bass. It's a treble bass expander. It leaves the mid-range where it's at. So for the people that are metal heads, they like to do the scooping sound. This is perfect for you. You go back to humbucking mode. I'm not going to play any of these guitars with distortion. I'm going to let you actually hear the guitar. Um, but you could go to your humbucking thing. There we are, humbucker. And then turn up that. Now you put some heavy distortion on that thing and you're going to be um, crunching, you know, big time, but the mids are going to be scooped out. So you got an instant scoop feature. Okay? For people like me who like to go back to single coil. Okay, so we're back to single coil. Now we change that TBX from 5 to, which is normal, and indented to 10. It means a lot more clarity to us. It gets, leaves the mids where they were again, treble and bass go up, and it just sounds like somebody turned on like a sonic maximizer or something like that. TBX on 10, back down to normal. TBX on 10, okay so it's a big difference so if you ever wonder what they were that's what it is it's just tone, treble bass expander and again you just got to look at one of the greatest Fender guitars ever made the Fender Performer, uh, whammy stuff, all works great. Okay, great headstocks. <laughs> um, everything about them are wonderful. Okay, so there's all the stuff I can show you about that guitar. I'll put it back in its cradle over here. Those are very, very, very hard to come by in perfect condition. Like I said, I was able to round up a few of them in all different configurations. So if you ever find one of these, grab it. Um, get it in good condition though. 
Um, everybody wants them in mint condition, so these are staying in mint, so I'm taking the extra time to keep that one that way. Okay, another guitar I wanted to show you. Okay, real quick, I'll just show you the one thing, which I told you about. I had the uh, three humbuckers. And this is stock. This is the only one in the world from Gibson. 1978 three pickup explorer other people have converted theirs to try to be like this but this is the only one that came stock from Gibson this way okay so again 1978 it's just a one-off meaning it's the only one in the world okay so you have your three humbuckers nothing splits nothing does anything and yes this is from Gibson middle one push pull simply turns on and off the middle humbucker okay so I have the bridge humbucker. Now I put in the middle pickup with it. And even though they're humbuckers, they end up being kind of stratty sounding. It's just because of the locations. Most people aren't used to being able to get these two pickups on a three humbucker guitar. Um, all the difference in the world is made by where your pickups are located at. So you get a 24 fret neck, you, your pickups are going to be in a different position than, you know, your neck pit, pickup is going to be in a different position than it normally is. So it's going to sound different no matter what. You can't change that. Um, so if this was two more frets this way, that neck pickup would not sound like that neck pickup anymore because it's in the wrong position or the a different position. So anyway, nothing is going single coil, nothing is splitting, nothing is tapping. It's just showing you what these sound like when they're together most every triple pickup guitar humbucker just goes one then the middle pickup and then the bridge you know the neck pickup not this one so it's just again the bridge pickup add in the middle pickup okay so now I'm going to go to the neck pickup, put in the middle one with it. Now I've got all three of them on. Okay, so that there is very country sounding. Um, very cool, but they're all humbuckers, but that's with all three pickups. If I take out the middle pickup, just full shred um, 78 Explorer. So there you go, a quick look at the only one of these in the world that was factory done by Gibson. Um, no others exist to anybody's knowledge. Thanks for to Fred and Americana and Phil X for showing me that guitar and getting that guitar for me. And the last one I want to show you that has things that you may be wondering about is this. This is a James Burton Telecaster. Some people are weird about all your tone woods, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, these are, uh, God, what is it? Now they're back down to only um, $1,600, $1,700. And then the white ones are at $2,200. Anyway, these are made out of basswood. Okay. And these are about as heavy as a Les Paul. There are very basswood is what I choose to uh, have all my guitars made out of. I choose it over every other wood. You can get different kinds of basswood, as you can get uh, Les Pauls that are, you know, of course, mahogany, um, and then you get a Flying V that's mahogany. But the Flying V will only weigh like six pounds, where the Les Paul weighs ten. It's just different kinds of mahogany. So they're not the same wood. So this basswood is not the same basswood as your $200 uh, import Ibanez guitars or Dean guitars or you know cheap stuff. This is the good basswood. And this thing weighs about 10 pounds. About the same as the Les Paul. So um, lay off the uh, basswood. It's, a, it's an amazing guitar wood. Um, just meaning that it paints easy. It doesn't have a lot of holes and grooves in it as does mahogany where they have to use a lot of wood filler to try to even get it close to 
what it is. Okay, I'll try to shut up and get back to this. This is a S1 switching. It could be anything, but this is found on a lot of Fender guitars these days. This guitar is a 2006 when they came out. Uh, USA, of course. Um, and this S1 does what is called series parallel switching. Okay, a normal this has three pickups in it. These are lace sensors. Okay. And again, that's from James Burton, the guy that played for Elvis and um, pretty much anybody that was anybody. Um, he's still playing them. He plays his red red uh, Paisley version of this. But what this switch does is basically uh, gets you humbucking sounds out of single coils. Um, all Fender guitars are wired in parallel. All guitars are wired in parallel. Um, the series thing just creates that um, dull sound again. So, but it really does thicken up for the distortion. So, all of a sudden you've got a straight. This guitar will do anything when it's in the middle. Okay, it does everything like you would think the five-way switch, bridge pickup, then the next two pickups. But when it's in the middle, it's called a strat o tele thing. So when you put it in the middle position, you actually get the two tele pickups. So here and here. So, because nobody ever uses the middle single coil by itself that has a brain or any ears for tone. Somebody else will write me and say, oh, I use it all the time. Well, guess what? Okay, anyway, and of course, the next position is what you would expect on a Strat. So, everything's just like a Strat, completely, except for the extra tone knob is missing. It's just telly, you know, master volume, master tone. And I'm going to do it in the two positions, so it's the middle pickup and the bridge pickup. <laughs> One of my favorite guitars in the world, uh, easily my favorite Fender guitar in the world. That's the neck. Here's the neck in the middle. It's just a brilliant sounding guitar. Here it is in the middle with the tele pickups. Okay, so back to this position. The two position. And this goes from parallel as it is now and when you just push this button in right here it goes to series okay series wiring and now it all of a sudden loses all that glassiness and all that fenderness and sounds more like a humbucker okay it's a great switch to have or to put in your axe here it is in parallel series okay sounds like humbuckers but you don't have to make the hole so this is the best thing out of everything I've shown you today for the single coil guys and for guys who just love humbuckers too. You can have it, sounds like it, um, but then you've got all, all these other choices. Why limit yourself to like a Les Paul where you only have three ways to switch, nothing else. This can do <laughs> so much, um, it's just crazy how many useful sounds this can get, unlike Yes, this Ibanez Blazer is a great guitar, but the um, in and out of face thing just sounds like crap. And the coil tap is okay. You know, it kind of does that humbucker thing. Um, but this S1 switch going from series to parallel is the ultimate in real world tones that you would actually use on a gig. Other ones are cool for novelty and for explaining things to you, but this is a real-world guitar here. So you have all these different combinations of pickups you can use, then you have that. I mean, for, for God's sake, listen. I mean, it's a huge sounding because of the hum, because of the lace sensors sound better than any other single coil ever made on the planet. They are just huge. There are no poles under here. Um, there are no huge magnets. And there's no string drag from any of this. They pick up all over the place like it's a blade pickup. It picks up. It picks up all the way from here to here, not just where pole pieces would be. These are not just black covers over pole pieces. It picks up this entire range. So they pick up. They have a broader range than any other single coil pickup. And they do not make your guitar sound like it's out of tune like every other pickup will because of the string drag from the magnets in it. These don't have that. So lace sensor 
pickups are great. They're just my favorite pickups in the entire world. Okay, parallel. And series. So that makes, as you can tell, now it just sounds like a Les Paul. Um, that was distortion on there, and you've got some thick soup there, you know, ready to serve. So that gets very, very, very thick. Why am I not turning on the distortion? Because I want you to hear the guitar. <laughs> um, you can figure it out from here. Okay, so. That's parallel. Here's series. Back to parallel. Okay. different sound okay check it out series now parallel it is just huge so there you go that is all the time I'm gonna take of yours and um, hope you enjoyed learning what is actually what these are no not what I think is what this is what is what and again uh, Gibson will screw you uh, pretty much in every way possible all the time but uh, we all know that, or most of us know it. Um, so whoever's doing their advertising or putting their stuff out, nobody's pre proofreading anything. So coil tapping, well, yes, where you actually tap the coil, like, you know, after 10,000 windings and they still got more windings to go, it's only done on single coil pickups. So again, if you see a humbucker, you know, it's only going to be in the Gibson ads. I tr uh, trust me, they're there right now. Go look. Um, it will say, with coil taps. <laughs> no, not if it's got a humbucker. It's a coil split. They just don't, they're either that dumb or they just don't care or they just don't know what, what. I mean, you know, they have really gone to shit so bad lately. But um, it is what, it is. all the companies are going to shit. Uh, PRS is the only one I know that's still kind of staying on their game. But uh, there you go. Um, all the different doodads and switches and what they actually are and you can take every one of these to the bank because um, I mean I can't change facts so I hope you learned something um, and despite the fact that I'm a single coil country guy you know what the humbucker stuff sounds like and what it sounds like when it's split what it sounds like when three humbuckers are on together when two are in a kind of a strat configuration and all that and what they actually sound like when they're split not tapped <laughs> and so forth and then when you heard the fender one you actually got to hear what it really sounds like when it's split because that is a real um, humbucker being split on that white fender performer guitar instead of like the Gibson Les Paul where it's almost split the fender does a perfect split so it's true 100% split like the new Gibson Les Paul traditional Pro 2 Mark 2 because they screwed it up the first time but I like it because it's a little bit thicker and it's not so twangy when you want a guitar like that then there it is so there you go uh, rewind this show it to your friends and uh, enjoy thanks and um, play loud play often play hard play flaccid whichever you want to do. <laughs> Take care. Bye.